to share a story right now about the other day I went into a business office and it was a small lobby with a receptionist and me. She asked me something that I get asked quite often. That's why I want to talk about it. She says to me, is that your natural hair color? And I say, yes, it is. So, you know, women, we get talking. She opens up to me. She says, I'm going to be 58 this year. And I was thinking about going gray. Now, she was blonde, and I could tell that she was letting her gray hair grow in. She had about three or four inches already grown out, but it was blended beautifully. She didn't have to suffer through that skunk line if you have black dyed hair and white grows in. It all looked kind of sandy, blonde. She said, yeah, I was thinking of dyeing it again this weekend. I said, no, oh no. You're, you've started, you've gotten over that hump, keep going. She said, well, I'm not sure. I implored her, I said, it would make the blues, it would make your blue eyes stand out so much. And she says, oh no. I might do it if I look like you. And I winced. I've heard that before. And later in the video, I'll tell you why that makes me wince when I hear that. So I finished my business in the office. And when I went back to the lobby, before I left, um, I needed to speak with her. But there were about five or six people in this small area. She was helping another customer, and I just kind of raised my hand over the customer, and I got her attention, and I said, excuse me, I have one word for you, and that is empowering. And when I come back again in a few months, I want to see the results. <clears throat> well, she knew what I meant. I didn't want to get too personal in front of these other strangers in the lobby about her hair color, but she knew what I meant. And she liked it. She kind of wiggled in her chair and laughed and liked it, liked the attention, liked the, the advice. And <clears throat> that's my advice to women that are considering if they want to go gray or not. Three takeaways from that story. One, do not compare yourself to others. It's kind of a cop-out, and it leaves you in a never-ending spiral of sadness, despair, dissatisfaction. It stymies any movement forward. It's a cop-out. Oh, if I looked like you, I'd do it. Oh, if only this, if only that. It's setting your vision outside of yourself for something that's unattainable. She will always look like her. She will never look like anyone else. I was at the airport and I saw a young man in his late 20s and you could tell he had from the thighs down his legs blown off and from his elbows down his arms blown off. I saw him put on his headsets and I saw him give his boarding pass to the airline employee. I saw him get down the jetway to the airplane. He was still functioning. Imagine if he sat in his chair saying, oh, if only I had arms and legs like everybody else. He didn't. He took what he had and he continued on with his life. Now that's an extreme situation, but I, I bring it up to make a point that it's futile to compare yourself with others. You are given the life you're given, the gifts with those lives, and it's best to be grateful and use it to the best of your ability. <clears throat> Learn to embrace what you've been given and turn that embrace into love of self and gratitude. Second takeaway from the story with the receptionist is 
to consider the toxic chemicals that you're using every time you dye your hair. Whether you're doing it for five years, excuse me, 10 years, 20, 25 years, every month or so, your body has to absorb those toxic chemicals. I dyed my hair for 10 years. I had a, an extreme allergic reaction from my neck up where my skin would get extremely red and it would puff out and then it would itch and then it would peel off. And it was this cycle that <sighs> was distressing. And it went on for a long time, maybe a year or so, until I figured out what it was. You know, there's a point where your body says, no more, I can't take that. I can't take that certain chemical. Uh, I was fortunate enough to see the allergic reaction that my body had, but st scientific studies have shown that women that dye their hair have a higher risk of breast cancer, especially in Afro-American women. So those poor women can't even see, all of a sudden they're diagnosed with it. You know, the body is not meant to be doused in chemicals that are unhealthy and compromise our health. So women, wake up, take your health back. Know what you're doing to your one and only vessel that is taking you through this journey called life. Don't you want to feel the best you can, feel the healthiest you can? If another hair color than your natural hair color makes you feel good, terrific. I have nothing against women changing their color hair, but use henna. It comes in a wide range of colors. It's non-toxic, it's a plant, it's natural, and it, it covers gray. It changes the color of your hair. <clears throat> Third takeaway is what I had said to her before I left. I said it's empowering. It is profoundly empowering. It's almost so empowering, it's hard to put words to it. It's like when you have your first born child, it's hard to describe the love you feel for this new little creature. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's immeasurable, the amount of satisfaction and happiness and empowerment you feel from letting your hair go natural and being not a slave to the salon every three or four weeks to regain your health, to be authentic. Um, personally, my own hair became healthy again. Um, I inspired other women. It's, it's an empowering process. It's difficult to grow it out and wait, but once you get there, there's nothing like it. Something to consider. I love you very much and God.